Setting up a private equity fund is daunting enough. At least let's uh, demystify the whole part about where and how to set up the corporate structures. I look at the example of Luxembourg as a financial centre, which is good to set up in, and I keep it simple. Coming up. If you want to have a private equity fund, you need to set up somewhere. So how do you choose? Well, you look at four key factors. The first factor is reputation. Does the financial centre have a clean bill of health as far as things like money laundering and tax evasion are concerned? An important component of making a good reputation is the presence of an effective regulator, and I will talk more about that in a minute. The second factor is infrastructure. Does the financial centre have an adequate ecosystem of accountants and lawyers and good telecoms? The third factor is practicality. Is it in my time zone and can I get there easily? The fourth factor is cost. Can I set up without breaking the bank, especially if I'm a first time or mid cap fund with our unlimited admin budgets? I think that today Luxembourg meets all of these criteria, but let's first look at the global picture. Here is a map of the world showing the main financial centers. We can see a concentration in the Americas and Europe, this, to some extent, reflects where the main financial investors in the world are based, but there is also regional consideration, which I will get to. Let's uh, first address some of the myths, the image sometimes of men with sunglasses and large suitcases going into Caribbean banks is outdated in the vast majority of financial centres. In uh, recent years, various international initiatives to curb money laundering and tax evasion have resulted in the relatively few offending financial centres cleaning up their acts in order not to be blacklisted, except in very few cases. So now we speak about financial centres, not offshore centres. Let's look at our map in more detail. The traditional big three financial centres are the Cayman Islands, the US state of Delaware and Luxembourg. Until a few years ago, Cayman and Delaware accounted for about 80% of the market. But in the last 10 years, Luxembourg's share is increasing as a result of the 2011 European Directive on Alternative Investment Fund Managers. This has had the effect of helping the market to develop in sophistication and transparency. It's important here already to point out that despite claims of bureaucratic regulations, if you manage less than a couple of hundred million euros, it hardly affects you and only really kicks in regulation-wise when you manage billions. Let's get back to regional considerations. As you might guess from the map, Mauritius is popular with fund managers operating in Africa, Singapore with fund managers operating in Asia, Cayman with fund managers operating in Latin America, Dubai with fund managers operating in the Middle East and North Africa. This brings us back to our fact of practicality and cost. Let's also not forget that things change over time with financial centres. So, for example, this year, in late 2020, Dubai is losing ground because it is too expensive and bureaucratic. Cyprus is losing ground due to its Russian connection and political issues. Malta is gaining ground due to user-friendly reforms made by the local authorities. And Ireland is gaining ground because of Brexit. Here we are in Luxembourg. It is nested on the borders of France, Germany and Belgium and has a population of 620,000 and the highest GDP per capita in Europe. Most people here speak English, French and German. One estimate puts total private equity assets under management located in Luxembourg at around 400 billion euros, which is 20% of the total estimated global 2 trillion euros. Traditionally, Luxembourg was the place where more mid-cap funds would set up, with 11% of its workforce in financial services, and this accounting for 26% of its GDP. Clearly, Luxembourg is going to make sure it is a sought-after destination for private equity fund managers. In the past, it had a bit of a reputation for being very expensive and complacent, 
and got into a bit of trouble because rich Germans, Belgians and French driving across and putting their money out of reach of their respective taxman in the compliant Luxembourg banks. But now that's all over and now Luxembourg is a well-managed financial centre. Although I would suggest that they make the flights in and out of Luxembourg airport less rip-off expensive and their private equity association should give much better value for the subscription fees. But these are only minor gripes. I suppose I will miss my annual trip to Cayman where I usually buy a Hawaiian shirt and like a middle-aged idiot I try to look cool by this hotel pool. What we have observed is that the 2011 EU directive I mentioned stimulated the regulatory authority to take this as an opportunity to spearhead positive development. The name of the regulator is the Commission de Surveillance du Secteur Financier, in short the CSSF. Although their name is in French, they are totally bilingual. One of the best things they have managed to do in the last 10 years is to combine the Anglo-American ways of doing things with the continental European ways. So now you are equally comfortable whether you are an American thinking of switching from Delaware or an Italian who prefers speaking French and using civil law. In this combination, Luxembourg is unique, as most financial centres still tend to be one or the other. The CSSF, in common with many other progressive regulators, has fully embraced digitalisation and open, accessible communication. OK, let's look at how it works in Luxembourg. Don't get worried, I am a fund manager, not a lawyer. I'm going to explain it clearly, without all the legalese and without the irritating caveating of every statement. Here it goes. You have six regulatory umbrellas to choose to put yourself under. You can see in the pie chart the relative market shares of each one. Let's go from left to right. Part 2 UCI is more for mutual funds investing in quoted instruments. It represents a small part of the total at about 1%, in keeping with Luxembourg's traditionally being more a centre for alternative investments. SIF is for the broad alternative asset class including hedge funds, real estate and others. SICAR is for private equity funds. RAIF is for smaller private equity funds. EU VECA is a special EU wide umbrella which is specifically for funds investing in SMEs. In the case of RAIF and EU VECA, it is the fund manager who is supervised rather than the fund itself, unlike in the first three cases. Finally, we have unregulated, which is for the smallest PE funds. So, let's say that you are an up-and-coming fund manager. You can start unregulated with your small fund of, say, 100 million euros. Then, you can graduate to RAIF, which means you have to sign up with an officially regulated fund manager, but you are now allowed to market your fund more widely in Europe. As you continue to grow, you can then evolve into a CCAR, where you now, as fund manager, no longer need to sign up with an approved outside fund manager and can get approved yourself directly. It's a clear pathway and it's also a clear menu for fund managers according to their needs and budgets. Once you have decided under which regulatory umbrella you want to be, you need to choose what kind of corporate structure you want for your fund and fund manager as well unless you manage the fund internally, meaning one of the fund partners or shareholders acts directly as the fund manager. In private equity, it is obviously more common to have an outside vehicle appointed as the fund manager. In Luxembourg, you have the whole gamut of company and partnership types, but let's consider the ones that are the most relevant to private equity. Let's go from left to right again. The SRL is like the UK Limited Liability Company, the US LLC, the German GmbH or the Italian and French SRL. It is typically used for the fund manager. Then we have the three structures used for the fund itself. The SCA is a share company but functions like a partnership. The SCS is a partnership with what the lawyers call legal personality, meaning it exists independently from its partners. It can be compared to a Scottish partnership. The SCSP is a partnership without legal personality, so more like an English partnership. In practice though, the SPSC can have an office, a bank account, assets and debts on its own name, so it will work just fine as a private equity fund vehicle. Indeed, the SCSP has been the growth product of Luxembourg over the last few years, 
due to its ease and its uh, flexibility. For the costs, I'm just going to look at those for whom it will matter most, the small and mid-cap funds. You have the legally fixed costs of putting up the capital and the costs charged by the service providers for setting it up and managing it year on year. There isn't much between it, but the srl SCSP combo probably works out the cheapest at around 30k up front and 30k per year. Obviously, setting up the more elaborate umbrellas like RAF and SICAR will be a lot more expensive, but if you are a bigger fund, you will be able to afford it. So that's Luxembourg, situated in the heart of Europe with the traditional alternatives, which has made big steps over the last 10 years. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please consider subscribing if you did. Until the next one.